Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. My subscribers might remember. For my power meter project I want to measure wind speed. There are many different possibilities to measure this speed. To choose the best sensor I have to compare them. And for that I need a small wind tunnel. In this episode I will show you how I built a basic wind tunnel and especially I will show how to measure and set the speed of a fan using an Arduino microcontroller. This technique is not only usable for fans, it can be used for all kind of motors which need a stabilized RPM. As a side effect I will show how useful and easy it is to use interrupts for this purpose. But now let's continue with the wind tunnel. First I need a strong fan to produce a decent wind speed. Normal 12 volt DC fans are rated below 1 ampere and this is definitely not enough for my plans. Fortunately I found a strong fan which has a maximum of 4 ampere resulting in nearly 50 watt power. Its diameter is 12 cm and it, in its description it was called violent fan. Here you see the result of this violence if the owner is not cautious. In addition, I need a tube to transfer the air to the sensors. At the end of the tube, I reduce the diameter to 6 cm. This reduction has two purposes. One, to even out the airflow and two, to increase wind speed. My 3D printer printed the attachment of the fan as well as the reduction piece. At the end I had the raw wind tunnel laying on my bench. To supply the power to the fan I use a cheap Chinese 12 volt power supply. Its voltage is very stable. Because I'm so pleased with it I enclose the link to the supplier in the comments. Now let's start the fan and measure how much wind speed it is able to produce. The wind speed is more than 60 km per hour or close to 40 miles per hour. This is enough for me because I will use my power meter on my bicycle and 60 km per hour on an even surface is more than the world record without slipstream. So I completed the first part of the project. I have now a working wind tunnel with a quite high wind speed. To evaluate wind sensors it is necessary that I can set a particular wind speed and keep it constant. Fortunately my fan is a so called 4 wire fan. This means that it has 4 wires attached to it. Two wires are ground and 12 volt. The third wire provides the TACH signal which produces a square wave signal. Every quarter of a revolution the signal changes its state. I show this using an LED connected to it. The datasheet says that the TAC output needs a pull-up resistor and can sink 5 mA maximum. The fourth wire can be used to control the speed of the fan. If we supply a 5 volt pulse width modulated signal or PWM signal to this pin, the fan will set its speed accordingly. For this fan the frequency of the signal should be around 16 kHz. Now we have a fan with an output signal which is proportional to its speed and an input signal which can control its speed. There is only one missing part to build a stabilized system. We need a controller which is capable to measure speed, compare it with the desired speed and create the right PWM signal to steer the fan. As said earlier I wanted to use an Arduino to do this job. So this Arduino has to measure speed calculate the necessary PWM ratio and provide this signal to the fan. 
but how can we measure speed with an Arduino? Calculate the fan speed is quite simple here. We just measure the time between two state changes. Because we know that we have four state changes per revolution, we can either decide that we use all changes or we only use changes in one direction. Because fans are mechanical devices, it is well possible that the signal is not completely symmetrical, which means that the times between the changes of state are not completely equal. If we use only falling or rising edges, we can reduce this effect. This is why I decided to use only the falling edge of the signal. So I will have 6000 times 2 state changes per minute, which results in 5 milliseconds between two edges. The shortest time we have to be able to measure is 5 milliseconds. Arduinos have two built-in time bases, millis and micros. From our calculation it is clear that millis is not sufficient and we need to use micros to get the necessary precision. If we would measure 6 milliseconds instead of 5, the measured speed would be 5000 rpm, which would be a measuring error of 1000 rpm. Usually we use while loops to measure time. We store the actual time, wait for a change of the, the input signal and calculate the time we had to wait for the next edge. This works fine in the milliseconds range. It would not work properly in the microseconds range. And in addition, we could hardly do anything else with the microcontroller because all other tasks would use time and reduce precision. Its only purpose would be to measure speed. Fortunately, all microcontrollers have a mechanism called interrupt. Interrupt do exactly what the name says. They interrupt the normal execution of a microcontroller's program. The reaction time to such interrupts is fast, because it is implemented in the microcontroller's hardware. Our code to measure duration is now very short. Because the hardware waits for the edge, we just have to calculate the time difference between the last change and set the new start time. The while loop disappeared into the hardware. See also that we were able to change from millis to micros. This very short program takes only a few microseconds to execute and we will not feel it in our main program. It just happens like a miracle in parallel to anything else. As long as there are state changes of our input signal, we always have the most recent duration in the variable duration. Our normal program can read this value and easily calculate the actual speed from it. There are a few things you have to consider if you want to use interrupts with Arduinos. You cannot use all pins as interrupt pins and you have to attach your small program to the interrupt pin using the command attach interrupt in the setup part and you have to declare all variables used by both your interrupt and your main program as volatile. You find the necessary information in the reference part of your Arduino homepage. If our fan stops, the tuck signal will stop to provide changing signals and our interrupt routine will no more be called. This means that the last value of duration will stay and our speed reading would never become zero. This is why we have to implement some sort of synchronization between the two programs. Not a big deal, you can find it in my code. See the link in the comments. By the way, interrupts can be used for many other things. You can also attach it to timers to get regular things done outside of your loop with a very precise timing. 
So far, everything sounded logically and straightforward. As we all know, this is not typical for the world of an engineer. Now, if we test our concept in reality, we see a completely different behavior. The interrupt in the red channel is triggered much more than expected and provides completely wrong speed readings. If you look at the yellow signal, you see that the tuck signal is not at all the expected good-looking square wave. It is a dirty signal containing a square wave. This comes from the circumstance that this signal is measured close to a motor. Because this happens quite often, there is a well-known workaround for such situations. We use a Schmidt trigger. The Schmidt trigger is a simple circuit which sharpens edges. You find many descriptions about its principle in the internet. For today, if we connect the tuck signal to the input of a Schmidt trigger IC, we get a clean signal at the output. Our oscilloscope shows the result. Problem solved. This was an excursion to interrupts. Now we want to come back to our main goal. We can now measure the speed of the fan. In addition, we have to generate a PWM signal. Fortunately, a library exists to generate such a signal. We just have to include one statement in the setup to tell the Arduino the needed frequency and to set the requested PWM ratio in the loop part of our program. If the ratio is zero, the fan will stop and if the ratio is 1023, the fan will blow at full speed. Let's connect now the two program parts to create a small loop to determine the reaction of the fan to a particular PWM ratio. The loop sets the PWM ratio at 50, 100, 150 and so on till 1023. And the Arduino measures the, the respective speed of the fan. Both values are outputted into an Excel sheet. If you do not know how to connect your Arduino to an Excel sheet, you find the link to one of my previous videos explaining this procedure. The output shows now the so-called transfer function of the fan. This function is not completely linear. A comparison with the specification shows that everything works as expected. To set a fan speed, we can now go to this chart read out the needed PWM ratio and send this signal to the fan. As an example, we want a speed of 4000 RPM. Our chart says that we need a PWM ratio of about 47% to reach this RPM. This is already a success, but this curve is just true under constant conditions. If we change, for example, only the supply voltage by half a volt, the whole curve looks completely different. And we put a probe into the wind tunnel, the same applies. In the next video, we will find also a solution to this problem. Stay tuned or subscribe the channel and then you will be automatically alerted if this video is ready. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye!